Hello stars, this is Luminous Star. Welcome to the channel. I want to ask you a question. How do you become unhooverable? That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Mwah, my stars, thank you so much for your subscription. Thank you for keeping me passionate about keeping our channel active. Today's video, how to become unhooverable or simply ponder how can you become unhooverable. If this is your first time visiting, welcome to Luminous Star. Please click the notification bell. That way you're not missing any of the vlogs or videos, current stars. Please make sure you have clicked the notification Please bell. Please like and or share today's video. Check the description box below for further details to today's video. All right, now, today, we wanna talk about how to become unhooverable. One of the first things that you can do is to identify your core issues. Now, this does not take the cluster personality type off the hook. Sure, they do a lot of things that are not so nice, okay? The bottom line is, when you identify your own core issues, this helps you to identify what got you in the situation in the first place with the cluster personality and or not. So instead of trying to figure out the cluster personality type and what motivates him or her to do some of the things that they do, such as pulling shenanigans, okay? A lot of us know about those diabolical tactics. But instead of trying to, or utilizing all your energy, trying to figure them out, identify your own core issues. This way, this will help you to come up out of the sunken place. A lot of us have been in a sunken place because we have been obsessed, because we addicted. have been addicted, if not obsessed, by the narcissist or the cluster personality type. Okay, another way to become unhooverable is to embrace your shadow side. We all have a dark side, whether we want to admit it or not. The cluster personality type, they're very good with distracting us from identifying our own core issues because they want to be the center of our attention. They want to be right in the middle of our lives. They want to be the God or the person who controls our pleasure and our pain. Cluster personality types, they love the thought of being able to control other people. So they like to maintain that strong sense of control. So if you are not identifying your own core issues, more than likely, you may be wasting time and energy investing in the cluster personality type. Okay, so a lot of us are concerned about if the cluster personality type is going to hoover or not, okay? Especially after we go no contact. And around the holidays right now, this is something, again, that's on a lot of your minds. So in this video, I wanna talk about how to at least consider the hoovering tactics that cluster B personality types use in order to maintain control. So rather than spending a lot of time and energy trying to figure them out and trying to figure out their motives, no, just become knowledgeable and critically think about how they use the hoovering tactics to keep you under control. All right, so those are just a few things I'm gonna be going over with you all in the video. Again, check that description box below for further details to today's video, all right? Because a lot of us are dealing with cluster personality types in our lives, especially during the holiday, and it can become quite emotionally stressful. Okay, so you don't have time for that. We don't, you know, we're trying to enjoy ourselves, relax. So having said all that, enjoy your day, enjoy your holiday, and I certainly hope that you will come back and visit me again. Stay tuned for the video. Today's video, become unhooverable while thriving forward past narcissistic abuse. Topics of discussion. Consider how cluster B personality types use hoovering tactics as attempts to control. Second topic, spending a lot of time and energy attempting to figure out motives of cluster B personality types can prove to become a distraction. Next topic, embrace your shadow side by identifying your core issues to prevent a successful hoover. The final topic are the tools, references, and resources of which you may find in the description box below. First point, cluster personality types often desire a successful hoover, 
due to his or her addiction to obtain narcissistic supply from others without ever running out of supply. All he or she needs is the cooperation of others who think that they need them for something in order to be happy in life. This need for him or her, of course, is an illusion. One only desires the cluspy personality type for anything. One of the things that a cluspy personality type, such as a narcissist, really depends on is the illusion or that we believe the lie that we need him or her for something. That can be for validation, apology, closure, okay? Explanation of why they behave the way they do. As long as a person thinks and or feels that they need something from the cluspy personality type, he or she can be primed for a hoover. The narcissist and cluspy personality type, they look for signs that others still need him or her for something or desire them for something. Again, this can be foreclosure. The narcissist and other cluspy personality types do not do closure. They often, unfortunately, they harm others and they keep it moving. So as long as a person thinks in or feels that he or she needs the narcissist or the cluspy personality type for anything, then they are primed for a hoover. Narcissists and cluspy personality types are often addicted to people. In other words, they are overly dependent upon other people for the narcissistic supply. Cluspy personality types are often obsessed with the process of scouting for target prey, for narcissistic supply, and for anyone who may seem to be a prime for a hoover. Cluspy personality types often only look for the sign of other people being prime for either source supply or for a successful hoover. Next point. Neural pathways and biochemical addiction are two components that are necessary in order to increase the likelihood of a successful Hoover. Choosing to focus on cluster personality types after a relationship is over can activate the stress system, inducing withdrawal symptoms. Okay, so usually when the relationship is active with a cluster personality type, the stress system you know, it's activated, but it is not intense. What does the stress system consist of? It consists of the bonding system, the reward system, and the stress system, all in one, okay? So reward, stress, and bonding are part of the stress system. When these are activated during the relationship with the narcissist and cluster personality type, it is not as intense because the person is engaged in the behavior pattern that keeps him or her having that reward. Okay, the reward can range from anything from having some attention from the cluster personality type to actually having him or her lie to them and tell them that they are loved. Cluster personality types will do and or say anything to obtain narcissistic supply. So the reward is that the narcissist or cluster personality has uh, demonstrated some sort of affection. Of course, it's false, but it's still something that the other person wants from the narcissist or cluster personality type. So when the relationship is over, that stress system act is activated or it becomes more intense. Okay, it's more intense because the reward system has been interrupted. Should a person go no contact from the cluster personality type, he or she can suffer withdrawal symptoms. The stress system becomes more intense because the bonding as well as the reward systems have been interrupted. The neural pathways to the narcissist or cluster personality type remains intact even though the relationship is over. This is where the biochemical addiction also comes in. So after the relationship with the cluster personality type is over, it is often found that people who have been involved with him or her, and not just romantically, by the way, this can be a family or friend situation, uh, they are often experiencing withdrawal symptoms. Neural pathways are still connected to the narcissist and cluster personality type. Okay, this is how a person is physiologically uh, experiencing the separation from the cluster personality type.
This is also how trauma bonds continue to be intact long after the physical aspect of the relationship with the close to personality type is over. The two components necessary for a successful Hoover are the biochemical addiction and the neural pathways. Let's move forward. By attempting to figure out cluster B personality types might prove to pull one down into a rabbit hole of a sunken place distracted by their obsession and addiction of him or her. Cluster B personality types like to maintain a strong sense of control by gaslighting others to feel and or think that they are the only ones that can fulfill their needs and desires. Okay, so cluster personality types often want to be the center of a person's life, meaning they have to be the god, you know, or the devil of their pain or pleasure. Okay, whichever way you want to look at it. The cluster personality types, they like to be the center of attention. Okay, whether it's negative or positive attention. That's, uh, you know, attention is energy. That means that they're going to get the narcissistic supply either way. So when a person is focused on the cluster personality type, in other words, you know, they're trying to figure them out. They're trying to figure out who the new supply may be. They're trying to figure out if the narcissist or cluster personality type misses them or not. I mean, just, just spending a lot of time focusing in on the narcissist and cluster personality type, right? This can pull a person down like a stronghold, okay? Before they know it, they're slipping down into a rabbit hole of a sunken place, okay? And they're distracted by their own obsession with the narcissism and the personality type. They're distracted by their own addiction of him or her. This is not very good, okay? This is, this is a very grim picture here, but one that a lot of us have experienced. When a person spends a lot of time and energy trying to figure out the cluster personality type, yeah, very often they are distracted. They slip down into a rabbit hole of a sunken place. Okay, it's pretty grim. The cluster personality type actually likes this because that gives them the signal that that person is prime for a successful Hoover. The cluster personality type likes to maintain a strong sense of control by recruiting flying monkeys, by recruiting enablers, and also by attempting to gaslight the person that they want to Hoover back in. So the cluster personality type all across the board, they are gaslighting people in order to maintain that sense of control. Well, that means that they are manipulating flying monkeys as well as enablers in order to hoover the target prey back in. So there's a lot of mind games going on here by the cluster personality type. Okay, this can be the narcissist. It can be the person who has a, a borderline personality disorder. It can be the person who has a histrionic personality disorder or the antisocial personality disorder. The cluster personality types are notorious for playing mind games. This means that they're using gaslighting techniques in order to hoover you or someone else back in. So when a person is in the sunken place, it is often because they're being distracted by their own obsession, if not addiction, of the cluster personality type. And at the same time, the cluster personality type they're looking for signals to see if the person is prime for a Hoover. And if they are, they will find them in the sunken place. The Just imagine the cluster personality walking around and they look down and they see you in the sunken place and they start smiling. This is because the cluster personality type knows that you are prime for a successful Hoover. When the targeted prey is found by the cluster personality type to be in a sunken place, there's a couple of things that are going on. The cluster of personality type is looking down and they see inside of that rabbit hole of a sunken place, the targeted prey. The cluster of personality type, they now know that more than likely they're going to get a successful Hoover. Why is that? Because the targeted prey looks up and they see the cluster of personality type and nine out of 10 chances they want him or her to rescue them out of the sunken place. So now you have two people who are locked into this obsession type addiction codependent relationship. One way a person can become unhooverable is when they look up and they see the cluster personality type, 
they can say, not today. It is that moment that the targeted prey who is in the sunken place can become unhooverable. They can become unhooverable by choosing to get themselves up out of the sunken place. It is at that time that they can choose to detach from the cluster personality type. They can even let them know your services are no longer needed here. The targeted prey can begin to rise up, dust themselves off, and soar up and out of that sunken place. It is also at this time that the targeted prey learns that the cluster personality type that they thought was a superhero is not a superhero at all. They are their own best love. They are the ones that they have been waiting for all along, not the cluster personality type. To become unhooverable means that the targeted prey has identified core issues within him or herself and they realize that the cluster personality type was an illusion all along. They were like an imposter. They were like a fraud all along. Let's move forward. Embrace the darkness to identify core issues. Because like the ATM machine that's out of order, the narcissist is out of order. You're not going to get your money from him. <laughs> you know, all the money you put into your account, you go, you go and you try to get some money out of that account via the ATM machine. That AM machine, that ATM machine may not be in order. It may be out of order, out of service. So like that female narcissist and that male narcissist, when you go to that ATM machine, they're going to be out of order. Right? They're not going to be in the service. So stop going to them. It has to dawn on you somewhere and you have to get to that point where, you know what? Enough is enough. Right? I got to that point. So, again, first point is when you embrace the darkness, that means you're not in a state of resistance anymore. That's what that means. Guys, that meant for me, if I felt bad about what happened, I let my heart break and I let the tears flow. Tool number one. Regardless of whether an attempt to hoover will surface, consider demonstrating your growth rather than choosing to engage in the dangerous cat and mouse mind games that cluster personality types are notorious for. Tool number two, work your support base by practicing self-preservation, emotional discipline, assertion, and personal boundaries as mindfulness exercises, along with focus and tension techniques. Next tool, pardon me, focus and tension techniques. Step number one, analyze the situation. Step number two, identify the core problem. Step number three, define your audience. Step number four, develop communication objectives. Step number five, determine the key promise and support points. Step number six, define your strategic approach. Step number seven, match communication approach to identify motivation barrier. Okay, I wanna explain step number seven. Uh, match communication approach to identified motivation barrier. Okay, so identifying the motivation barrier. What's blocking the motivation? Could be fear. Okay, so you've identified the motivation barrier. It's fear. Match the communication approach to the identified motivation fear. What communication approach would you match with fear? So what language do you tend to speak when you are functioning from a place of fear? Fear tends to paralyze a person. What communication style or approach do you use when you are in a state of fear? What's bringing on the panic attacks? Some of us have anxiety issues. And yes, we have the panic attacks. What are we telling ourselves just before that attack happens? What mood do we tend to be in? What are we afraid of? So step number seven is simply saying, you match the communication approach to identify motivation barrier. What's the motivation barrier? You're not motivated, so what's, what's blocking the motivation? It could be fear. So what are you telling yourself? This is where the communication approach comes in, or the communication style. What do you tell yourself 
What types of individuals do you allow to be around you that may be speaking curses? They may be speaking the language that matches the motivation barrier, which is fear. See, all of this is lining up. So when it comes to focus and tension techniques, basically what you're trying to do is deal with your own core issues. You are identifying what's holding you back from thriving forward past narcissistic abuse. So when the narcissist and custom personality is looking for you to be the prime for a successful Hoover, these are some of the signals they are looking for. They're looking for you to be in fear. Most cluster personality types love it when other people are in fear, especially if he or she thinks that they have induced fear in you. They think that they have influenced fear in you. A lot of cluster personality types, they like to maintain that strong sense of control. So if they think that they are the center of your pleasure and pain, well, you are primed for a successful Hoover. Narcissists and custom personality types, they will attempt to Hoover even 10 years later, okay, if they think that they can get more supply from you. One of the signals that we unconsciously let out or send out to the custom personality type is that of fear. We think and or feel that we need them for closure. We need them for love. We need them to live. We need them in order to be happy. To become unhooverable, you have to focus in on your core issues and root them up for yourself. This way you can rise up and out of the sunken place. You don't have to look for the custody personality type to pull you up out of it. You can come up out of the sunken place yourself and therefore you are unhooverable. Final tool. Stress, reward, and bonding systems can possibly become activated after dysfunctional relationships with cluster personality types come to an end. Bonding with others can help to reduce the effects of withdrawal symptoms due to biochemical addiction and neural pathways to him or her being interrupted. Next point. Trauma bonding indicates an insecure attachment style which can activate the reward system while the dysfunctional relationship is active. The pleasure principle is often what motivates one to continue to invest in a toxic relationship with cluster personality types. Meaning, you realize that you have been in an addictive, codependent relationship with one who has been like a fraud, with one who's been like an imposter, with one who never had your best interest at heart. You never needed the narcissist for anything. You only desired him or her. Doing shadow work. First tool, consider making shadow work an aspect of your strong support base in order to expand it. So not it. only have a strong support base, but expand it by adding shadow work to that. Okay? So this will help you to thrive forward, and this will help you to be at the advantage should you have a cluster of personality and or a narcissist around you, they cannot use your pain against you because you're using your pain for personal power. References and resources. Please check the description box below for references and resources. Beware of the hook. Narcissists tend to hoover during the holidays. I'm Luminous Star. I certainly hope you all have enjoyed this video. Until next time, stay tuned for more videos and stay tuned for more vlogs.